Welcome to the Jack Duffley Show, a weekly podcast exploring investing, real estate, the markets, law, technology, and everything in between. Here's your host, Jack Duffley. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Good to have you here with me today. I know it's been a long time and I apologize for that since I've actually released an episode. I've been working on all sorts of different things. Obviously just launched my new book as I've talked about on my YouTube channel and I mentioned on earlier podcast episodes as well. So I actually wanted to dedicate this episode of the podcast to a portion of my book. I'll actually read the postscript of that book in just a second. But the book is The One Property Retirement, currently available on Amazon in both ebook and paperback format, and I'll have an audiobook coming soon. That's actually the audio excerpt I'm going to use. It'll be at the end of the audiobook when that is available also on Amazon. But the book's about a simple strategy for building your retirement nest egg using real estate, and it does this through simple buy and hold real estate investing. And it's really great for beginners who might not know how to actually go about buying a property. It takes you from the very beginning when it comes to vetting a deal, trying to figure out what a good deal actually looks like, learning how to run the numbers, figuring out what you're actually getting into before you get into it. And then it goes through the fine-tuned mechanics of actually going through a deal, getting to the closing table, all the stuff leading up to that. And then also post-closing, maintaining the property, doing light rehab work, and then renting it out and keeping it rent-ready at all times. And then, of course, maintaining reserves through all of this so that you're always well-equipped. And then, because you now have this property under your belt, you can use that to supplement, if not completely replace, your retirement investing strategy. That is the premise of the book, and it should be very approachable for someone who might be unfamiliar with real estate investing. Because you can, in fact, become financially independent with just one property if you play your cards right. It might take a little while to actually get there using just one property, but with great products like low interest, low down payment loans on a fixed year 30 rate schedule, it's surprisingly accessible to actually get into real estate investing and really start catapulting your investment returns over the long term. And with a low down payment loan, you can get started with real estate investing with relatively low money in that In some cases, if you're a veteran, for example, you don't even need to bring a down payment because you can use something like a VA loan. Or if you're not a veteran, you could usually take advantage of something like an FHA loan, 3.5% down, or a conventional mortgage where it's 5 to 20% down, if not more, depending on whatever you want to do. And the best part is once you move out of that property, if you decide to, you get to keep that financing. And it's usually over 30 years, low interest rate right now with interest rates at all-time historic lows. So if you can lock in a really great mortgage, mortgage on a really great property, you can really take advantage of the equity buildup you'll get and all the principal pay down you're going to get when you actually have your tenants pay down this mortgage for you. It doesn't really even need to cash flow in the meantime. You just need enough to replenish your reserves the whole time and then make sure that the mortgage is constantly getting paid down so that by the time you retire, you actually get to hold on to this property that no longer has a loan on it and you get all that untapped cash flow. And then if you need to tap into the equity as well, you can do that. So if you want to learn how to actually go about buying a piece of real estate, how to actually take advantage of this one property strategy, go ahead and check out my book, The One Property Retirement. I'll include a link in the show notes and also the description if you're watching this or listening to this on YouTube so that you can get a copy yourself if you'd like to, or at least check it out, or maybe send it to someone who might be interested in this sort of topic, since it would definitely help me out a lot. If you do end up buying the book, please do remember to leave a review on Amazon, because that also would help me out a lot. And speaking of reviews, be sure to leave a five-star review on iTunes if you like this video or you like any of my content, because that also would help me out a lot. But anyways, let's get into the postscript of the book. I know it's at the very end of the book, so it seems a little weird that I'd be giving this as the sneak peek, but I think it's a very good general lesson on what financial independence is and why it's really a great thing for people to achieve and why it's so important for so many people, since... It's often seen as this foreign sort of concept, financial independence. Oh, that's only for super rich people. Or that's only that's something that I'll never be able to obtain. That's kind of how it's painted for a lot of people. It's this sort of pipe dream that can't be achieved. But it really is obtainable. And some people just don't even know about the concept. They, they've they never been told about investing for yourself or how to pay yourself first so that you can actually get to a better position over the long term than you currently are in rather than just plodding along like you maybe have been taught. 
and you're just marching along every day, not really making any real progress. You're just doing what you're told to do, and you don't really know what the point of it all is. So financial independence is a great way to have some real purpose in whatever it is you're doing for money, since now you can move that money into something to actually achieve financial independence so that now you unlock your time again. And that's basically what this postscript's about. I don't want to give too many spoilers, but hopefully it gives you a good idea about what financial independence is and why it is so great. Postscript, The Wonders of Financial Independence Ultimately, the one property strategy is just another tool to use towards financial independence. The one property strategy can replace your current retirement saving strategy, but it can also supplement it. Controlling more assets is rarely a bad thing, and it gives you flexibility to live the life you want in the good times and the bad. Nothing would stop you from buying additional property, or still investing a significant amount of money into the stock market, or working to build a business to create additional income. In fact, it's a smart move to diversify your investments and income streams. Sadly, no one knows what the future holds, but you can take action to increase the likelihood that it is much more comfortable for you and your loved ones. If you never take action, you can be fairly certain that your future will not be much better than your present. Maybe that's fine with you, but I'm sure there's something in your life where having greater financial flexibility would help out a lot. And that can be well beyond your own worldly possessions. What if you could use all of your time to serve others because you built a fantastic future for yourself while you had the time and the energy? Financial independence is not the exorbitance or pure laziness that it's often made out to be. Financially free people simply have options. They have the ability to scale back at their jobs. They have choice in how they structure their days. They have the ability to pursue new ventures. They own their time. Now, some financially independent people take it many steps further to become massively wealthy for one reason or another, and some do live a life of total luxury. There's no shortage of get-rich-quick products promising this over-the-top lifestyle where you, for just a few quick payments of $999, can learn the secrets of success yourself. But that is well beyond simple financial independence. Financial independence is security and freedom. You have greater freedom to become a wealthy goon if you so desire. After all, many millionaires and billionaires say that the first million is the hardest. You can definitely step it up, but you don't have to. And that's a beautiful thing. The one property strategy is simple, and it takes many years to bear fruit. It really is not special in itself. There are many ways to invest, and it's just one way. But the end result is just as sweet. You own your time and you have options, and time is one of the truly finite things for each of us in this world. Retirement is a different word for financial independence, and it can be achieved earlier rather than later if you so desire. Whether you realize it or not, unless you never plan on retiring at any age, your ultimate career goal is already financial independence. You know that you probably cannot work forever, so you build a nest egg over many years of commuting to and from your job. For many, by the time they're in their 60s, they reach some form of financial independence, even if it's partially supplemented by the government. This is good enough in the eyes of much of the population. But if you've listened to this point, you probably aren't satisfied with that path in some way. You want more freedom, or at least a more efficient route to it. I encourage you to continue educating yourself about saving, investing, and creating income streams. Valid strategies for achieving your financial goals exist, but they all have one common denominator. They all require your time and effort to get going. Whether that be investing a large sum of money at the beginning, a large portion of your time and effort, or some combination of both. No legitimate financial strategy avoids all risk or personal effort. And even the illegitimate ones risk dramatic punishments. So, go forward with the knowledge you have and look to add to it. Sometimes that might mean taking bigger action. If you've read many books on buying rental properties, but have yet to buy one, you will learn a lot by actually going through with a deal. Learning by doing is significantly more effective, and any losses can be treated as tuition. Obviously, tread carefully, but not so carefully that you avoid acting altogether. With action, you can make real progress towards financial independence and beyond. So that was the postscript to my book, The One Property Retirement, about a simple strategy for building your retirement nest egg using real estate. And hopefully that gets you pumped up to start investing for your future so that you too can achieve financial dependence, assuming you're not already there. And if you are already there, definitely I'd love to get your feedback. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment about what financial independence means to you. Or if you're trying to achieve it, definitely let me know what that means to you and how it is 
influencing your current everyday decisions as you try to reach that goal. Because I'm sure there's something in life that we would like to have our time freed up for if we needed to, even if it's for just insurance. Even if you love your current job and you don't want to move from it, then financial dependence can't hurt. You at least have that option, like I talked about in the postscript. You have the option to use your time for whatever it is you want. And if that happens to be your current job or some other career, then great, do it. You have the option, you don't have the pressure anymore. Pressure is the key thing that financial independence gets rid of. You are not forced to do something that you don't want to do because of money, which is unfortunately what happens to a lot of people. They take a job that they hate or they do something that they don't want to do, and that's because of financial pressures. They feel like they're obliged or maybe they do have real obligations. They have a housing payment to make. They have food to put on the table. These things are real issues, and having financial independence under your belt will give you that sort of safety net built in to where you don't have to make decisions based on the emotion and, and the incredible fear of being able to just provide for yourself. Even if you only take a few steps towards financial independence, you'll at least be in a better position than if you did not. Even having a larger emergency fund is a form of financial independence. It might not last you very long, but at least you have an option in that you know you have some cash that you can use in an emergency. If you want to make a big decision, if you want to take some sort of risk, you have that option. If you don't have any money parked to the side or any investments, then that's going to be very difficult to do because you are kind of you have your back up against the wall. The only way to actually build some sort of space away from that wall is to start chipping away basically you got to find a way to bring in new money got to find a way to cut expenses and once you do have money ready to invest you got to have some sort of strategy ready to go and that's what the one property strategy my book is all about it's about that simple strategy for investing in real estate and it's great if you're unfamiliar with how to actually invest in real estate or really how it can benefit you over the long term it goes without saying I'm not a financial advisor and the book itself isn't financial advice. This whole podcast isn't financial advice, but I do hope it helps to inspire some folks to start taking positive steps towards a better, more fantastic future for yourself. Since there's a lot of things that you can do to make the future better and there's a lot of things you can do to make it worse. So having a plan going in and a concrete goal that you're shooting for can only help to make that path that much easier to follow and hopefully a lot more efficient and effective. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you guys are interested in the book, definitely check out the link that I'll include in the show notes or the description on YouTube to check out the One Property Retirement. You can also do a sneak peek of the book on Amazon. You're able to do that because there's an ebook version. So if you're still unsure about whether you want to buy it, you can take a look there. And like I said, there will eventually be an audiobook version. I will have that ready to go as soon as Amazon and Audible say that it is okay to publish since they're currently reviewing it right now. Hopefully it'll be out very soon. But until next time, take care. Thanks for listening to The Jack Duffley Show. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss any new episodes. For more content on personal finance, real estate, and other topics, check out jackduffley.com.